What will I do? <laughs> Meet Karen Kibet, a sports news anchor at Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. <laughs> Behind her laughter and cheerful spirit, she has experienced a fair share of online gender-based violence. I was new on TV and was making my debut. People were like, you don't have money. And I remember that dress was so beautiful. The situation became worse, affecting her social life. I'm not married. A certain man was trying to tune me. Then he Googles my name. Then he sees Karen is dating son, so I tycoon, blah, 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 blah. And it became an issue to, to him. Why are you dating so and so? And here you are telling me you are, you are single. Then he sends me screenshots. I'm like, who is this? What is this? I don't know this person. No, no, no. Ah, it never got anywhere. <laughs> the trolling affected her mentally. She did not seek professional counseling but sought solace from her family. Association of Media Women in Kenya, in partnership with other members, has support for media women in Kenya. Within the association, you'll find media practitioners who have a law background, who have different backgrounds, or rather information on different things. So you will get to have lawyers speak to you and tell you about your rights. Kibet had a sports YouTube channel, but her guests became victims of cyberbullying. Her name is Inside Sports. The people I brought, now they had one or two, three things to say about the, the guests. Still, it's my show. Her acquaintances were not spared either. I went to cover the All-African Games in Morocco. Now they said that the president of the Sports Journalist Association chose Karen because Karen is the, is the girlfriend and it was actually published that he's going to sleep with us. Computer misuse and cyber arms crime uh, act of 2018. So this is the only statute that we have in Kenya right now that protects victims. It is a statute that came because of these issues. Online, gender-based violence does not discriminate the high and the mighty. We all saw what happened to our CJ. For three, four months, there was a lot of uh, her being trolled, being called names. Some even led to hate speech. Some even led to our family. And no one did anything. Women politicians are not spared either. There's another one that is gaining a lot of momentum in this country whereby we are calling it uh, a way of uh, a partner or a spouse releasing photos, intimate photos of a partner. FIDA, with the help of established authorities, has managed to report the perpetrators to police and helped the victims to get therapy. For example, we had to use the relevant commissions uh, of data privacy uh, to help us we had to report to the police, uh, we had to call the victims, some of them needed a bit of therapy. FIDA also partners with AMWIC to protect women in media. Men too have experienced online gender-based violence, but women are the most affected. Our whole president shutting his Twitter account because he couldn't handle his, 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 his citizens. You know, it's crazy. If you are found guilty of online violence, you can be sentenced for imprisonment for 20 years and a fine of 1 million Kenya shillings. The FIDA vice chairperson, Christine Kungo, urges victims of online abuse not to stay silent. But if you stay silent, it will then make you feel, uh, or rather you make the perpetrator feel like they have won. So I think for me is uh, reporting, so being aware, and then reporting. Most perpetrators go unpunished, contributing to the rising cases of cyberbullying. If today I am affected on digital platforms, I'm cyberbullied, and then I walk to a police station and say that uh, I was cyberbullied, something happened to me, what's the first reaction that I'd get from them? But what we generally see is, what were you wearing? What kind of photo did you post? They'll even laugh about it. But this is something that is psychologically affecting you, which affects your ability to execute your mandates as a journalist or a media practitioner in general. There are relevant establishments, relevant authorities that have been established, and they are paid to do this work. But why are they not doing anything? 
According to the UNESCO report of 2022, in collaboration with ICFJ, 73% of media women globally have experienced online gender-based violence. Private life is their private life. They should not be trolled. Uh, they should not be made to feel like they are, they are less Kenyans or their private life is, is public life. So that is part of sexual uh, online harassment. As information and communication technologies continue to advance, social media platforms have threatened the safety of journalism and women journalists. Sheila Kayaro-Yogo reporting for KBC in Nairobi.